Techie Ziggers, I'm Nick. We did a video a little while ago comparing AMD's cheapest AM4 APU, the dual core A690 500, to the Ryzen 3 2200G4 gaming performance with the integrated graphics. Since then though, we've received quite a few comments asking us about how the A690 500 would perform with a dedicated GPU. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload basically every single day of the week, so do yourself a big old favor and make sure you're subscribed. In this video, we're gonna see if the 50 US dollar AMD A690 500 is a viable CPU for gaming with a dedicated GPU, or if you should save your money and go for something a little bit more powerful. Spoiler alert, <laughs> we're jumping aboard the express train to Bottleneck City. Let's talk about the CPU and how we're actually going to be testing this. The AMD A6 9500 is a dual core APU with no multi-threading. It's also got six GPU cores. It has a base clock of three and a half gigahertz and boosts up to around 3.8 gigahertz with a TDP of 65 watts. The question that was asked was whether or not the A6 9500 would be a viable CPU for gaming. I didn't want to grab a single GPU and run it through our usual benchmarks and call it a day. So instead, I decided to pick five GPUs, all of which come in at different price points and performance levels. I avoided anything on the lower end and instead opted for anything in the mid range to high end. From experience, the people who usually ask these questions go for something around the GTX 1060 or the GTX 1070 when they eventually getting around to building their machines. With that in mind, the GPUs I chose were the Gigabyte Aorus RX 584GB and the ASRock Phantom Gaming RX 588GB and before you ask why, it's because we're testing a wide range of typical resolutions and although they use the same GPU chip as cards, they're actually quite different. We also use the Gigabyte WinForce GTX 1066 gig and the GTX 1070 version of the same card. Finally, because I wanted something to represent the high end, we use the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2080. The motherboard we used was the ASRock B450M Pro 4 MATX board with 16 gigs of DDR4 memory in the Fantex N2 Evolve MATX with all of the panels and all of the filters removed for maximum airflow. It was basically an open air test bench at that point. Now I didn't use the stock cooler for the A690 500 because I have no idea where I put it. So instead I used the stock cooler from a Ryzen 5 2600. We ran three different benchmarks that all used the GPU in different ways to see what the performance looks like in those different situations. As you can imagine, there were a lot of tests conducted. There were nine tests on five cards as well as nine tests on the i7 8700K test bench and that totaled around 54 benchmarks performed. Now, I'm not gonna walk you through all the results like usual, but instead just point out things that I noticed. So let's get to it. First up is Rise of the Tomb Raider. We performed these tests with the high preset and SMAA set to four times as it really punishes the CPU. There is a legend down the bottom that shows the resolution and on the right is the average frame rate. Because people will be interested, let's see how the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 compares between the i7-8700K and the A6-9500. For the 1080p test, we saw the i7-8700K outperform the A6-9500 by 125%. For the 1440p test, we saw the i7-8700K system outperform the A6-9500 system by 90%. And for the 4K test, we saw the i7-8700K outperform the A6-9500 system by only 13%. As you can tell pretty early on, the A6 9500 severely bottlenecks all of the GPUs that it has attached to it. 
There are a few reasons why, and I'll touch on that a little bit later in the video. Okay, let's get into Unigen Superposition. We perform these with our usual settings of 1440p custom with motion blur and depth of field disabled with 4K optimized textures, 1080p extreme for smashing the CPU, and 4K optimized. MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 compare between the i7-8700K and the A6-9500 in superposition? Let's find out. For the 1080p extreme test, we saw the i7-8700K outperform the A6-9500 system by only 6%. For the 1440p custom test, we saw the i7-8700K system outperform the A6-9500 system by 127%. For the 4K test, we saw the i7-8700K system outperform the A6-9500 system by only 11%. On to the last batch of tests, we did this with the Final Fantasy XV benchmarking tool. All of the tests were performed with the high preset in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. This test is a little bit different. This test gives you a score based on the total amount of rendered frames. However, I recalculated the test results to give better context on an actual frames per second basis. The runtime for the benchmark is approximately 390 seconds, so we divided the total amount of rendered frames by the runtime to give an average FPS score. These tests alone should pretty much put a nail in the coffin for the A6-9500. So how do the RTX 2080 compare between the i7-8700K and the A6-9500 in Final Fantasy? Prepare your brain. <laughs> this one's a doozy. For the 1080p test, we saw the i7-8700K system outperform the A6-9500 system by an eye-watering 343%. Now, I had to run these tests a few times because it just seemed like it was too much and after six more runs across the two systems, we still saw the same results. For 1440p, we saw the i7-8700K outperform the A6-9500 system by 230%. For the 4K test, we saw the i7-8700K system outperform the A6-9500 system by 97%. Based on those results alone, it's pretty safe to say you probably should save your money and not buy the AMD A6-9500 if you want a CPU for gaming. There is no application that would make it viable. You could save a few extra bucks and go for a Ryzen 5 2600 if you really wanted an AM4 system. Now, there are a few reasons why this is a bad choice for gaming. Firstly, the chip itself only has eight PCIe lanes, whereas normal Ryzen chips typically have around about 20 PCIe lanes. Instantly, that will cripple anything to do with dedicated GPUs or any type of NVMe storage. Secondly, it only has 
to cause. I think most phones have more cores than that these days. But that's besides the point though. It's not just the core count, it's the type of CPU cores it uses. It uses the Bristol Ridge 28 nanometer process, which is based on the excavator architecture. It was AMD's last vestige of legacy architectures before Zen. It wasn't very good and it was notorious for being hot. I don't want to get into the super technical details, but if you're interested, you can do your own Google food ninja -y if you want to find out how it all works. Lastly, you have alternatives for cheap CPUs for gaming. Like I mentioned earlier, you can grab a Ryzen 5 2600 for around about 150 US dollars, or if you want something secondhand, you can pick up secondhand i5s, i7s, or Xeons that are between four and eight years old that would blow the A6 9500 out of the water for gaming performance as well. So why do I own this CPU? All right, I bought it to flash older AM4 boards in case I didn't have a first gen Ryzen chip. I've only ever used it for this purpose. Well, that was until I decided to make this video. Okay, maybe you're wondering and maybe you're asking yourself, well, who is this CPU for? And why does it exist at all? Well, it's for someone who wants a really basic word processing and web browsing machine. It's also aimed at things like point of sales terminals and digital signage. You can build a cheap system for around about 150 to 200 US dollars for those purposes with this chip. However, if you're in the market for a gaming CPU, do yourself a big old favor and skip this chip your money can be spent elsewhere. <laughs> if you're interested in getting anything mentioned in this video, there are links in the description. Anytime you use those links, you know what it does. It keeps the dream alive and helps us keep food on the table and helps us pay the cats a good wage. Yeah, that sounds like a thing. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Tell us what we did wrong. Basically, just tell us anything. Once again, thanks so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And I just want to clear this up as well. The reason why we didn't upload a video yesterday <laughs> was because all of the testing for this video took an incredibly long amount of time to do. And for one guy to do it by himself, yeah, I think I need to sleep now. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Not a review. <laughs> Not a review. Yeah.